Hey guys, so, okay, so you saw me, what my wood pile looks like, you saw me doing some cutting and some sanding, and now, uh, last night I did a little painting, I'm going to show you some of the little houses that I did, and I'm going to show you some of the signs that I've painted, and then I'm going to show you kind of how I paint the sign, kind of as a real quick disclaimer here though, um, this video really isn't about how to paint the signs. The video is about looking at things differently, looking at the scraps that are about out there and deciding what you can create with them because you don't always have to go to the craft stores or to the Dollar Tree or wherever to find really good stuff. Sometimes it's literally laying on the side of the road. All of the fence pieces I found, my neighbor had um, added a new section of fence. They were literally just piled up at the street. I had gloves in my truck and I threw them in the back of my truck. If you were driving a car, you could throw them in the trunk of your car. Um, whatever, get a friend who has a truck. Um, don't take all of them, just take a section of it. I did take all of them. And we've been going through them for about a year. We've made a lot of projects out of them. It was free. Now, I will say, while the wood was free, it actually took a really long time to prep all the wood. But it has come out really beautiful wood. So, um, the projects I'm doing are actually pretty fast and easy, except for the houses, which took an exorbitant amount of time. But my time was all spent in the prepping of the product, the materials. If you're short on time, then maybe you get products that are pre-done, pre-cut, whatever, that you can paint. If you are short on money, then look for free objects and spend the time in making those free things beautiful. So let me show you just a few quick things that I did. Um, some of my favorites. I really love this little guy. Um, I can show you kind of some of these techniques probably in a different video. Uh, maybe I'll do, I have a couple that I haven't finished painting in case I want to show you kind of what that looks like. But um, these are really fun. Uh, a very simple one. Uh, the line work is really what makes these pop because I will say um, I didn't have any liner brushes at home and I had to go and buy some at Michael's. Um, all mine were at the shop and I didn't want to go to the shop because I've had this horrible cold that has been making me hacky and coffee. Um, so I needed a really good liner brush. So I went ahead and got a couple of those. And then, um, cute little house here. Uh, this one I really like. It's obviously holiday, but I like the little topiaries. I think it came out really fun. Let's see. I did, I'm going to hang a little wreath on this one. Uh, it's going to be kind of Christmassy barnyard. And then just like, ironically, my favorite is this little itty bitty one. I love the Tudor window, I think. I think that's my favorite is I just love that little Tudor window. Uh, let's see. And I have this one. And I have this one. And I have this one. And some of these I'm going to stack on some things. You'll see if you follow us on Instagram, uh, you'll see things that I put up. And um, I, I'm making more than just these little houses. I'm making some key racks out of them, things like that. So there'll be more than just the little houses themselves. I'm just kind of moving them out of my way because I need a lot of room to paint this. Um, and then let me show you these bigger signs that I did. You can kind of see them behind me. Um, so I can't really get the whole thing in because they're really long. Um, look how beautiful this wood came out. So this is the back side. You can see where it was strapped on there. The nail holes are still in there, but this is after all that prep and after the one coat of Wise Owl went on it, um, and then just painting them up. They're really cute. Again, I kind of really like the Tudor Aries. So this is my church with a little stained glass window. And Sue, I had to add this last night after it was almost done. Sue said that cross really needed to be like, oh. so um, I illuminated it. And um, nice typical this was definitely Pinterest inspired, but just a pretty easy, pretty easy little Christmas tree with a star and some ornaments. This one, this one's my favorite. Um, I've never painted a flamingo before. So I really wanted one because, you know, we're Florida, we're coastal. We do a lot of coastal stuff in our store. So I um, I pulled open Pinterest and and I got inspired and that's my flamingo. So this is happy holiday and uh, I love my hollies too. So anyway, this is all, all freehand, all of that. 
Uh, I didn't break anything out. Now, if, if you're not comfortable freehanding, then what you can do is they sell white graphite paper or regular graphite paper, and then you can use a stylus, which is basically a ball on a stick, and it kind of works like a pen, and you can trace it out, um, like the old carbon paper, but if it's graphite paper, it's the same thing that pencils are made of, so the carbon isn't gonna be as good. You could also use chalk to try to draw it out, and then that will wipe off easily with your fingers, and these are all great options if you're gonna freehand something. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, stop this in a second and I'm going to change the frame and I'm going to paint a piece or at least part of a piece for you to see exactly how easy this is. And I just want you to start thinking about like what you've been given. Oh, I did one other piece. Let me grab it over here real quick. And so again, coastal and oh, upside down. And so a sand dollar and some cute little old school um, Christmas lights. Sand dollars, believe it or not, were really tough. Okay, so what you want to do when you're doing these is pull up something that inspires you. So in my case, I pulled up Pinterest because I have all kinds of coastal or whatever, or I can just search for the term. Like when I wanted to do the flamingo, I just searched flamingo and I found an image that I liked that I could figure out how to break down. So like when I was breaking it down, I'm like, I don't, and let me let me lift it up so you, I can kind of break it down for you. So when I was looking at this, I went, okay, well, that's a circle or an, an oval with an S. And then like the body was actually like a football. So I drew a circle, I drew an S, and I drew a football. And then I just filled it all in. And then I used highlights and lowlights to really balance it out. And then some basic brush strokes and some line work. And I'll show you how to do some of that in this little project I'm gonna do. But remember, this isn't about the project I'm painting. Sure, feel free to take it, use the heck out of it if you want to. But this is really about using Pinterest and just having some good old creative fun to do things. Use Pinterest pictures, images as inspiration and figure out how to break them down and then um, do it. And the more you do this, the easier it will become, I promise. Uh, I didn't used to do a lot of freehand painting. I was always one of those people that bought all the books and then I'd trace them and then I'd paint them by following all the instructions. And then the reality sets in that you spend so much time doing that. If you actually just learn the shapes and how to put them together, your work is gonna be faster, it's gonna be better, and it's gonna be you and not somebody else, okay? So I'll show you how to break down some of the shapes in the piece we're gonna do. Let me pause this camera and change the angle and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I have this little board. Um, this one's only probably about 18 inches long. Uh, still see, look how pretty that old fence wood was after, after it got cleaned up and then sanded and then stained. It's gorgeous. I mean, honestly, this is perfect for planking. So you should be looking for old fence woods just to plank furniture pieces. I almost wanted to use that except for I really wanted to paint some stuff. Okay, and the next thing is to have some nice artist brushes. So you should not store them in water, like I currently have them. Ah, I do always keep my fine tips out of water. Um, you should really clean them after you use them every time. Obviously, I did not do that. And showing you my water, I made a little spill. So I'm just gonna hold this here, okay. And then you should always have some absorbent paper towels. Absorbent is important. You don't use like the napkins you get from like Taco Bell or some McDonald's or something. Okay, and I like to fold mine. These are bounties, they're nice and absorbent. Um, I like to fold mine a couple times, but I don't find them up too much. I just need enough that they'll, they'll be absorbent um, to kind of wipe my brush off here and there. And then I'm gonna decide what paint, what side do I like the best. And while I kind of love all this roughness, um, for what I'm gonna be doing, I actually prefer to have this end up and only one knot. So I'm gonna do the light bulbs, kind of like on that coastal one, but less coastal, just kind of more Christmassy. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is, also I just use these, these are pretty inexpensive. You can get them anywhere. Um, after you use them a while and they get kind of cruddy, you just literally peel them up. So if you don't want to clean them after every use, you can wait until they get kind of thick 
and and they'll just peel up. Uh, you can do chalk paint. In this case, I'm using Artist Loft because I have such a wide variety of colors. And um, if I were doing this at the shop, I would have been using chalk paint. But um, since I have this at home, this is what I'm using. Again, I don't wanna go out and buy a whole bunch of new supplies. I don't do this at home very often anymore. Uh, this is really just kind of something for me to do while I've been homesick and I can't, I, ha I can't be as active as I'd like to be right now. So this is what I'm doing. Now on my, on my Christmas tree lights, and if you think about Christmas tree lights, generally thinking, you're thinking that this is a green string of lights, right? They're always green because they want to be hidden into the Christmas tree. But if you just paint straight up green on this dark board, you're honestly not going to see it very well. So I'm going to start the whole thing in sort of a base of white or off white. So I've got two of these little palettes and just using my artist loft. This is uh, titanium white. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. And I'm just going to pour it into one of these little, little holes, little bumps. And then I've got, I, I prefer working with an angled brush. Now we sell a great kit, a great artist set that's very inexpensive. It's like less than $10, I think, for a nice artist set. Uh, I tend to buy more expensive brushes because I do like to paint from time to time. <clears throat> but the artist brushes we sell are really nice. So they're certainly really good. My favorite brush is typically a bigger um, angle. So I like like a half inch <clears throat> chisel tip. That's my favorite. I love the angle tips. And actually, I tend to love that when I'm painting anything, but I feel like these have the most control and I can do the most with them. So I tend to like the angles because of what I'm doing. I'm gonna be using a tiny one. This one is a quarter inch. Um, and the, these are pretty easy to understand. This is a quarter inches across. This is three quarter This is harder because it's long. This is um, about a half an inch. So you can easily see the difference between them and why they're named what they're named. Okay, so you always start with a wet brush, a lot like chalk painting, and then I'm gonna kind of go into my white, and with that, I'm gonna sort of water down my white a little bit. I'm not really doing canvas painting. <clears throat> I apologize for the creakiness of my voice and the clearing of my throat. I still am getting over this cold. And then it helps if you use a knuckle or a pinky if you're up high and your brush is straight, if you really need to have a lot of control. If you need to have a ton of control, you need to use your pinky. Because of what I'm doing, I'm gonna lead with my knuckle so that my hand can be less shaky. It's gonna create a lot more stability. And so what I'm gonna do is holding this, um, not exactly like a pencil, but very much like a pencil. Um, I'm gonna, with my angle tip, so that my angle will be straight, um, will be flat, okay? It's not gonna be up at a tip. It's gonna be, my angle is gonna be flat. And so I'm gonna be pulling the whole length of my angle. Um, my brush will be angled, but my tip will be flat. I'm just gonna lead with my knuckle gliding along the board as I go up and I go down. And my knuckle will create stability for my brush. And I'm gonna run out of paint and I'll have to restart. The other option is to make very small strokes and you can do it if you're controlling the brush. But if you really want a good fluid motion, what you want is you want your pinky to kind of control you along the way. Okay, so so brush down, tips flat. I'm just gonna have confidence and I'm gonna roll with it. And I like to occasionally, because it's just who I am, I like to have a little loop occasionally. And it's okay when if you need to go from the other side. The angle brush gives you the most stability, in my opinion. So that's why I like it. And I'm just gonna continue to go up and to go down. And it's totally fine if your waves and your line has varying thickness. Angle brushes tend to do that. And you don't have to have a smooth pattern because this is, think about like kittens chasing a ball of yarn, okay? And that's kind of what I'm creating, or an image of kittens chasing a ball of yarn, and how it 
just sort of rolls in all directions. And that's sort of what I have created here, okay? So now that I have my basic understanding of how my piece is gonna go, I've laid it out nicely. Now I need to decide how I want my light bulbs. Now, some colors are gonna go really dense and you just kind of have to learn the colors for that. Like this um, metallic blue I know is super dense. I'm not gonna have to lay a light color before it. But if I wanna lay a yellow light bulb, this, this yellow and pretty much any yellow are sheer. So it is always good to lay a cream or a white down first and then go over it with the yellow um, just to have more opacity and do less coats. So that's kind of what I like to do. So I'm gonna decide how I wanna lay out my light bulbs, what order I want my colors. I have a wide variety of colors over here that I'm choosing and we'll kind of go through it. But I'm gonna start off with a yellow light bulb. So I'm gonna show you, um, actually I'll put it kind of in the middle so it'll be easier for you to see how I do it. Using the same brush that I did my swirls in here, I'm going to, I want you to think about the shape of a light bulb. And basically a light bulb is a lot like um, an oval tip and then sort of a boxy back end with rounded edges. So I'm going to draw my, kind of like an egg, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw my, my, my tip, okay? And then I'm going to fatten out the butt here, the, the egg. Sue's behind me doing a, like a chicken dance. It's <laughs> kind of hilarious. So, and so I'm going to give it, give it its little oval butt. It's kind of hard to paint and try to let you see <laughs> the angle because where I want my hand to be is, if I put it where I want it to be, you will not get to see it. Okay, and see, because I'm trying to do this from a different angle and I don't have my, my hand down to add control, I went a little over, but that's okay. I can just just clean it up this way. And honestly, there's gonna be so I'll show you a bunch of variety of tips to clean it up. But there is my basic light bulb shape. Okay, if it doesn't look like a light bulb yet, that's okay. I promise you it will. So the other color that is not good at dancing are a variety of greens. Dark greens, sure, they're great. Lighter greens, not so much. Yes, you could use a dark green in this. I like this to be brighter and whimsical, and I like to use the darker, darker greens as um, sort of contrast and, and shading, and then, you know, highlight that. So I'm gonna use kind of a medium tone green, so I'm gonna use this again with a white background. So let's do that one. I really kind of wanted one over here, so I'm gonna move this a little closer so you can see it, but I'm gonna come down here. So let's see, I have that one going that way. I'm gonna make this one go the other way. Sorry if you can't see it right off. Can you hear me? Go this direction, maybe I'll help you in. I just completely dunked my brush into my paint fully, and that was too much. Especially, you don't really want paint at your ferrule, which is kind of the top here where the metal is. So again, this is kind of egg shaped, so you have that little oval and then it gets kind of fatter and we get a little rounded butt. And these are, these are old school Christmas lights. These are not like the lights you actually put on your Christmas tree. These are like the ones that used to hang from houses. At least that's how I'm stylizing them, okay? So I've got, doesn't look like much right now. Okay, so, but I've got the base for a yellow and a green. Let's go ahead and add some color. Now, I could do this in a bigger brush, and yesterday I was. I'm gonna do this in a smaller brush because I'm gonna try to be as delicate with this as I can um, and slow as I can so that you can really see the steps. And you don't need much, I mean, really, the littlest bit you can pull out of your tubes is what you need. I'm, it's really hard to get that tiny amount um, out of this. It just, like, it comes out in bigger, bigger than you need, I guess. Let's do one right here. So, again, 
we just kind of have our little egg point and a fat butt. And if you can break it into shapes, it really does help. Now, see, I rounded out that tip a little too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and I'm going to elongate a little bit. And it'll be totally fine. Okay. Okay, so I have a blue one. I have a blue one, a yellow one, a green one. Um, let's have a magenta one. And it's okay if you have more than one of the same color. Uh, you don't have to have all these colors. I, I like it to be bright and festive. But that's just me. This is your piece of art when you do it for yourself. Okay, let's see. Put that one going that way, so I'm gonna have this one going this way. You know what, I think I could have two here, actually. I think I've got enough room that I could have two go here. So I'm gonna have one going this way. And you say like, oh, what do you mean two? I mean, we know they're spaced out like every however many inches. How could you have two? This is not real life. You can have it however you want it to be. So now you can see this one's a little opaque. Um, this is where it might have been good if I had done white first. I know I did these yesterday. So I know I, I'm totally fine. The other trick that I can do is I can go a little tiny bit into my white and mix it with a little of that color and come back in. And notice how it does change the color, of course, but notice how it gets nice and thick um, and much more opaque and less um, transparent, right? And so I can add another layer next and that will give me the color I'm looking for without, now I've, now I've taken care of the opacity of, or the transparency of it and made it a little more opaque. Now the yellow, this doesn't work out so well, honestly, um, but in some of these darker colors, it does. So you can see that that's a good, that's a good functional switch. And, and actually after I got it in there, I don't think I wanna do two. I think I'm gonna keep that distance. Um, I'm going to want another one here. I definitely need one here and probably another one here. Okay. <clears throat> so I have a few more to go. <clears throat> and I am cleaning my brush um, in the in my little water jar. It doesn't matter that my water is not perfectly clean. I'm going to do a bright pink, even though I have a magenta. I'm also going to do a pink. I do tend to, when I'm using these little troughs over and over again, um, I do tend to try to at least put them in the same colors they were before, and then they're all nice and thick and gooey and I can pull them out later. So let's see, that one going that one, I thought one going that way. I think this one should go that way. So I'm gonna do the fat butt first. Nope, too hard for me to do the fat butt first. So we're going to do the egg first, just this way. Oops, sorry, got a little off frame there for you. And you'll notice, you see my pinky here? I do it out of, like it's automatic to me now, but that pinky creates so much stability for this brush um, for my hand that it has become an automatic reflex for me when I'm painting to look for where can I anchor my hand so that I have more control. And really the more you do it, you will learn that you gain so much control by anchoring that pinky somewhere. Okay, so this is what I've got. I've got green, pink, blue, yellow, magenta, uh, I might put another blue over here. The blue is really pretty when it's done. So and I've got obviously more than enough of it here. 
So let's go with my egg shape down here and my fat butt up here. If I were pinky down, this would be easier, but I am trying to not to obstruct your view. Okay. And I need to do a couple others. I'm gonna be quiet and I'm gonna go ahead and fit them in so you can fast forward. screen I messed up and went a little over so using my brush a little bit damp I'm going to basically use my water and my brush as an eraser and I'm going to go in and clean up that line and just wipe it on my wipe that excess paint on my rag rather than trying to fill that in I just cleaned it right up using my brush tip like an eraser Okay, so the next part is my light bulbs need a socket to connect to. So I'm gonna use a super dark green for this. Just have a little goo on the top of my brush here. So I'm gonna dip out some super dark green. <clears throat> and rather than using my ankle brush, which I love so much, I'm actually going to use a flat brush. And so I have a, half, a quarter inch flat brush, which was like the angle, except, you know, it's flat. Okay, so I'm going to, in this case, uh, still always with a bread brush, your brushes should never start off dry. Um, and that's really true pretty much in any style of painting. They should always have been dampened. Um, so I'm just going to take a couple little lines here under each light bulb. And connect. So let me do a little closer here for you. So we're just gonna take and do a couple little lines to connect our light bulbs to our strings. See how that works? Pretty easy, huh? And I'm going to go to a half inch, um, which I have here in the water. Okay. And for these, this is where I'm going to start making these light bulbs actually really look like light bulbs. And for that, I need a little Mars black. So what we're going to do here is called floating. And we for sure need our paper towel and we for sure need our water, okay? So, here's how this works. We get our bristles very nice and drippy wet. We remove most of the moisture by just touching the very edge to the water that will seep most of the water out of your bristles. We dip just the tip of our bristles, just the very tippy tip tip and we come back to where we dripped our water and we just kind of run a little line so that that black starts to spread across the tip. And then we have to decide on our light bulbs. While technically light bulbs are a light source, we need to create a light source to make these look dimensional. So we have to decide on a shadow side and a bright side. In this case, I'm gonna choose this side as the shadow side and this side as the bright side. Why? I don't know, it's how I like to do it. So, <clears throat> With always with your bristle tips flat, you're going to lay your whole bristle tip flat and you're gonna pull, you're gonna see a lot of water here. You're gonna pull this down so that it's basically fading. You see that? I know it looks dark, 
and it looks scary. That's okay. I promise it'll all be okay. And we're going to do this to each and every light bulb on this side. And I'm going to do the same thing to the light sockets. Where we have darkness, we must also have light. Same brush I was using with the black. Just got to make sure I have no black left in it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wet it, pull most of the water off of it, dip just the tip, and this side I'm going to go, this time I'm going to go the opposite side. Again, you can just use your brush, your wet, the wet side of your brush, um, completely to clean up anything you don't like. Really? Okay. See, even where they were super bright, those are not, they're not yelling at you as much anymore. Okay. So now I kind of have my edges. I'm going to go back with my um, quarter inch flat. And anything that feels dulled a little, I'm going to go back with um, and just add a little more, more of that color in the middle. Um, I want to be careful not to get too much in my ridgy areas. I don't want to suddenly fill that out. Okay. But if I feel like I lost maybe some of the brightness that I had before, like in this green, for sure. I wanna be sure to clean that up. Okay. All right, I feel real good about that. Everybody look good? Everybody looks good. Okay. I'm gonna let all of this dry for a few minutes. All my light bulbs, um, I just gave them extra moisture. I wanna let that paint, I want it to all dissipate. So we're next gonna move, work back on our string. So just as we did the string before, I'm gonna go back to my quarter inch angle. This time though, I'm gonna go at it with my green. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the darker green that I have, that I used um, when I did my bulbs because that's usually the color that the strands are when I did my little, the end of my bulbs here. So I'm gonna go over closely, not completely 100% over, mostly over my white. Okay, I've gone over side. Now I need a liner brush. I do typically like a low Cornell but the important thing to me is that that is a super fine tip. Okay, now going back to my black, I'm actually gonna use my use one of these other brushes and just sort of puddle some water into my basin here. Let's see if you can see that I've puddled some water into my black. And I'm gonna use my liner brush and I'm gonna dip it in there like an inkwell. Um, I'm gonna get some of that super fluid it out so it's the consistency of ink. I'm gonna spin and work that ink into my brush. Like this is basically going to become like a calligraphy ink, an old school um, fountain pen, okay? I'm gonna do line work across this whole thing. This is always a good pinky as an anchor or knuckle as an anchor. We're gonna use a series of fine lines. Not because I couldn't do a nice long one, but because I actually think that in this, I like the wispiness of multiple little 
jagged curves than a single one. I'm also gonna go ahead and outline my light bulbs and start to give them their definition. So I'm gonna outline them completely. This will clean up any, any little loose fuzzy marks you have on the outside, let's see. If this gets bloggy at all, like it starts to get thick and uncooperative, it's because you have not enough water. Um, your paint is getting too thick. This is time to get it back in there, roll it out, and start again. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a contrast. Little, can you see a little like comma on the floor? I'm gonna outline my socket. I'm gonna give it a couple little lines because, you know, they have those. And I'm gonna continue along my way. Okay, so now I've done not much. Anybody have an idea what's next? If your answer was where we have darkness, we also must have light, you win. So now we're gonna do basically the same thing with the white. I need to add a little bit puddling in here. Yes, this would be better if it were clean water. It is not. I'm aware. Creating an inky consistency. Gotta swirl on my brush in it. I'm actually gonna clean the tip of my brush there with like a feral end of it. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go back. This time we're gonna kind of go around. We're not necessarily trying to go over all of this, we're just kind of creating some motion <sighs> highlights. We don't need a lot along the chain like we did with the other colors. But see how even just that little bit of lightness kind of brought it up. We're gonna add a couple little light we really are pretty much at the end so i'm going to take this time and i'm going to go ahead and clean my liner it's important when you clean your liners just as you did in the in the in the paint to create ink and spin it make sure you're spinning it on your paper towel get all the paint that gets up in the ferrule or you will ruin your brushes now another thing you could do i'll go ahead and show you on a couple of these so that you can see is remember i said church sue wanted it to glow is we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a yellow wash and then we're going to do a white wash and we're going to make some of these glow so same thing that we did with the white and the black, except we're gonna use yellow, wet brush, rub it out on your paper towel, get a little stream going, and let's, uh, let's work outside these bulbs. So now you can really see the glow. And that wood, of course, will dry up, but you'll really see that yellow glow pop out because the white is gonna make the yellow stand out more on the board. Okay. 
so now actually my little board is totally complete you could have greenery or something if you wanted to you do not have to what do you think how did you feel about it i hope you enjoyed it all right so that was my tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and uh have a great time bye